Hello and welcome to Asset Flip, the show where we take the assets given to us free each month by Epic on the marketplace and using only those assets, spend up to six hours creating a new prototype demo for a game. During this video, you'll see me flip these assets into a game or prototype and review them along the way. You get to see how these assets can be used and also how useful they actually are for a game project. As a Patreon member, you get to download the project files and have a play around yourself with the final product, as well as some exclusive behind the scenes footage of me making the game and explaining some of the aspects I did to create it. So join me right now as we go over what assets we've been given this month. So these are the five assets we've been given this month. First up, we've got the level design toolkit. This looks like it is a toolkit that allows you to build levels a bit better uh, using utility widgets, which by the way are like widgets you can have in the editor to run functions and change values. Um, so here we've got something that should probably help when making levels, I guess. And different types of placements, okay. Okay, not too bad, it kind of like um, changes up the way you can select things bad okay uh, next we've got the alchemist's house now this I'm probably most interested in because this is my favorite art style uh, so we've got looks like we've just got a load of asset packs um, and quite a variety of things in there too furniture walls ceilings all sorts of things there that's good I like the look of this not bad now let's go back and next one so the old brick house so here we have a very nice looking house uh, design so very high quality, high detailed uh, textures, models, looks very polished looking design. Okay, good. That would be something cool with that. We've got the procedural spline and walls system. Uh, by the name, I'm guessing you can make your own spline walls using just like click and drop. Um, it looks like the case, yep. And you can mo age them and moss them, okay. And you can use custom messages, okay, and materials. That's useful. The problem with some of these asset packs is that you get something, but it's locked down to the assets they've provided. Um, that's good that this is at least promoting that it can be used with custom assets. And finally, we've got the close combat anim set. Uh, this looks like just a nice animation set. I usually love getting animation sets in these asset packs because I can't do animation, I'm rubbish at it. Um, and don't have the patience for it, but um, these help me cut a lot of that leg work out, so that's good. So we've got quite a good variety there, so hopefully we can use something in this. So those are our five assets for free this month. Let's go ahead and flip them into a project. So the asset packs were very visual um, this month. So. Looking at what I had on offer, I went decided to go with the haunted house sort of thing. So this was back and forth between trying to do like invader invaders, so like um, some like assassins coming into the house and you have to defend against yourself against them. But there wasn't really enough flexibility in the animation system to allow that. So I settled for a haunted house theme, and part of that I wanted to make a ghost. Um, so here I am setting up the ghost system for the character. All I did for this was I hid the legs using hide bone and I then created a material to uh, give this nice faded uh, effect for the uh, ghost. This involved a bit of final as well as using the position of the character in local space and fading it out at the bottom. So the bottom half of it sort of fades out into nothing, um, which is, turned out really nice and a really good effect. So once I got that into place, I started working on AI and getting that in there and um, obviously you had make the house dark. Uh, the house is very lit up by all these uh, manual lights set up, um, so I went around turning them all off, disabling the various assets that had lights in them, and then adding a torch to the player character. Now I did something a bit different this time than I normally do. I put on a spring arm, because uh, I wanted to see if I could fake the effect of moving the hand and sort of lagging the, the torch behind the camera turn, so the camera sort of turns before the torch does. So. It gave this effect there where you're almost detached from your torch a little bit, uh, hopefully increasing the suspense uh, going into it. Uh, now part of the Haunted House theme was to try and bring in some like notes and storytelling types of things. Uh, very similar to like Gone Home and other games similar to that where you find notes around the environment and these notes will tell you the story of the world going on around you. And um, 
I wanted to go through and say really mess up the player and and confuse him a bit. But this idea of making multiple universes um, that were streamed in at certain points. So one would be a house that you start in, which is all clean and tidy, and the next one you'd go in it looks like a. a like loads of damage has happened. Uh, things on the floor, crucifix is upside down, uh, everything's knocked over, damage blockaded. Uh, it's all, all all messed up. Uh, and that was the idea to get, show that someone's either trying to keep something out or keep something in. Um, and it ultimately is a really cool effect. It just took a bit of time uh, to go around manually placing these things, especially for things like the like shelving units, because they all have these uh, individual items like, like books and plants it took, it took some time and uh, then the third area I wanted to go to was like the hellscape so I wanted to go completely off the wall and go crazy with the hellscape scenario so I got rid of all the landmass around it and just had the building on its own and removed the roof so the idea being is that you'd go into the attic of the building and in there you'd be revealed into this hell landscape that would be revealed to you and on here would be low like, destruction and uh, broken elements and things like that. So in here I use uh, a lot of some of the um, uh, uh, alchemist house pack uh, assets and um, uh, the also the, uh, the spline wall as well to make these uh, intricate pathways. And uh, yeah, really wanted to mess things up a little bit and uh, make this weird ending for the game. So working on the transition between the levels now. Um, looking at the trap door going in from the damaged house to the hellscape uh, taking these assets that came with the uh, house pack uh, these were a bit of a pain because the way they've been orientated uh, weren't really ideal uh, and didn't make it nice and easy to put together so it was a bit of a bit of a faff but but then the end so the idea being is that there were these trigger volumes that when you walked into these trigger volumes they would um, open up the new level so I made some code on them that will uh, have uh, editable variables so I could easily edit them to load and unload certain levels in this case the attic would go from damage to uh, hellscape uh, when dealing with the hellscape scenario there was loads of collision issues I had to uh, come across and this is because I had to delete parts of the house um, so I had to go into like collision view mode to just make sure the player could actually navigate the environment as I intended them to. So yeah, it took a bit of tweaking um, to get into place, but there we have it. So we've got some more of the alchemist house pack. I wanted to give the impression that our house exploded or um, destroyed in some kind of way. So one of the issues I had with the ghosts in a damaged house was that all these assets inside the house pack have collision on them, which made it a right pain to put together because I had to go around and turn off collision on every single thing manually. Uh, which in some cases was really really fiddly because everything had a collision on it. Normally you wouldn't have collision on loads of things like that, so a lot of props, uh, for reasons just like this because it affects navigation. So here we have the finished product. Um, I didn't get it as finished as I'd like to have done. Uh, but nonetheless, here we are. Um, got some notes here. And click on to open up and read. And push any key to close it. And we can go through the door. So I did have to change the door system how they used it in the house project. Um, overall, the house project was probably the biggest pain to work with. Um, it involved a lot of changes, but um, nonetheless, we got the door system working with a new interaction system. And um, here's the house we can explore um, upstairs. And we should see the ghost around here somewhere. So the ghost I made able to navigate the, the most of the house, and he can also go through doors like so. So the way I did that was I made the doors not use a nav mesh, um, so the ghost doesn't actually see it as an obstacle. And I've turned collision off on him, so you can walk right through him, and he can go right through you. And one of the things I wish I had more time uh, to do more with was the ghosts. Uh, at the moment they're kind of passive, they don't really do much. But it would have been nice to be able to have them be more antagonistic towards the player. At the moment they just they just sort of hover around. Oh, there's another one. Um, I'm going to go in here and uh, the idea being that you would be able to go exploring around the level, trying to find your way out and so forth. 
and learn more about the history of the house. But we've got a note here, we've got up to this one. And we've got some weird spell like language, maybe. And I'll turn around and you see the house has now been trashed. So this has actually transitioned from one level to another whilst I read that note. Um, so yeah, we've got all the trash everywhere. This took a long time because just because um, assets were like little things, you can see where I miss a couple. Like this, where the light bulb is just hanging off it in the air. Um, yeah, absolute nightmare. So we go downstairs and explore the kitchen area. And over here is another note, which then activates a loft hatch to open up upstairs. Um, and allowing us access to the attic. As you can see it's quite choppy, um, I'm only playing in editor at the moment but it's quite choppy because the assets in the, this level are very high detailed um, and have all sorts of collision issues on them as well. Um, it, they are uh, just a pain to work with, um, more on that in a moment. So we've, got, so we've got the hatch here and this activates the last level which is sort of this hellscape. So we've got other things dangling around. Um, yeah, okay, so we can go up here now and navigate across these precarious platforms, and so forth. This is one I wish I had more time to work on, like this environment, because I think it could do a lot more interesting stuff with it. So, we got to here and make this the house appear again, and you go through it in a different way. I wanted to do stuff like make the uh, house different angles so you can explore it from like on the walls on the ceiling make it rotate and things like that go through here and that would eventually take you to another level uh, which makes the house rotate and turn but we didn't get that far and and, and that's where we got but this wasn't the first idea we had um, it well, the first idea was to do like an invasion type thing where we had the uh, uh, enemies coming in like the ninja combat and assets come in and you'd have to sneak around the house, taking them out one by one, like sort of John Wick style. But the problem with that was that the animation pack wasn't that varied and um, kind of limited what we could do with it. It was literally just like punches and kicks. And so um, I had to deviate from that. And then I noticed that their run was sort of like a Naruto type run. I thought that gave me the idea of doing ghosts because their arms look like they're dangling to their side. So the ghost is actually using the anima animation set um, the hellscape is using the level spline tool to do some pathing there and some of the um, uh, assets from the uh, alchemist house is being used throughout like the notes and uh, the planks of wood and stuff in in the hellscape and obviously the house has been heavily used um, but yeah and, and there you go so let's talk about these assets and talk about what we felt was good bad and what could be improved. So I looked at all of them. Uh, so start with the level design uh, toolkit thing. Um, this wasn't too bad, but the problem I had with it was that it you would have to just learn, sit down and learn how to use it. There's, there are so many options on it. It wasn't intuitive enough to be able to, I wanna hit this, hit this and hit a button and it will work. You'd have to actually just watch their tutorial guide video to actually understand it a lot better. And when you're already contending with Unreal's and knowledge of Unreal's uh, systems, you don't want to pick up someone else's system as well. Um, so it, it was it done it done the job, but it it felt like it was a lot more work to get to understand uh, than it needed to. And then we've got the Alchemist House. I like the Alchemist House. It all came in, like all separated pieces, had good textures, good uh, positioning, good collisions. Uh, very very nice indeed. On the flip side though, we do have the brick house uh, manor. This one was the, probably the biggest issue. And it had loads of little issues. Um, and it clearly was designed just to look nice and that was it. It, it wouldn't really want to use it for anything else. Um, so for example, the, uh, the house itself, the walls, the floor, the ceiling, that's all one asset. It's not modular. So you can't build a different house out of the same pieces that it's you're locked into that shape of the house uh, Which was very very limiting you, you couldn't do anything you couldn't take oh, I want to take it down the wall here put a door in if it was very uh, strange in that regard And then we had the doors they had uh, it was all interactable, but they relied a lot on the level blueprint, which is fine 
unless you want to uh, use these assets in a, like the, the door in a different map, then you, you've got to recode the level blueprint to handle that. It would have been far better to just put it on the door itself, which is what I end up doing and putting it on myself using my own custom interaction system. Um, and then there's the issue of the collision setting. So every single asset, every single prop had collision on it, which is useful when you're doing like physics based placement. But um, in this case, everything was affecting nav mesh. Everything was affecting uh, your movement. So unless you kept the house super tidy, you couldn't walk around it. It was a right nightmare to um, go through one by one, turning off their navigation. Um, it was it wasn't wasn't pretty. Uh, so th although I used that one heavily, I I wouldn't recommend it for anything really. Um, the individual assets are okay, but the walls and being all that as one object is really poor, especially for performance as well. Because now it's rendering the whole house when you don't need to see the whole house; you just need to see the bit you're looking at. Um, so that is an issue there. Um, then we've got the spline tool. This spline tool was fine. Um, I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, it felt quite intuitive, unlike the toolkit thing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, pretty good. Um, I, I say I would be happy to use that again. Um, uh, yeah, not an issue with that one at all. And I already mentioned before, the animation set is uh, decent. I like good animation sets. Um, it really is quite limited though in what kind of combat you can do with it. Uh, it says close quarter combat type animations, but it's really just punches and kicks really. Um, but it, it's all right. It's not too bad. Um, I had a good variety, a good number of animations in there as well. And that brings us to the end of this month's asset flip. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed watching it and learned something from this. Remember if you're a Patreon Gold member you get access to the project files over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Also if you want to support me over there or on YouTube members you get access to early access content as well as many other benefits as well. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next month for next month's asset flip. Bye everyone.